Are you ready to edit on an iPad Pro and ditch your MacBook Pro for a mobile editing system? Well, that's what Pedro did. Let's find out how. This is Cinema 5D, my name is Nino Leitner. I'm here with Pedro Hoffman in our studio and we're here to talk about editing on the iPad Pro. Well, first of all, my question, why would you ditch your MacBook Pro for editing? I mean, it's, you know, it has all the software you need. Uh, now, we have the iPad Pro, uh, but you don't even have the software that, you know, you can't use the same kind of environment that you're using on your Mac. So why do you, why would you actually use this as an editing machine? Uh, I sold actually my MacBook Pro and bought a new iPad Pro with uh, all its power to be quicker on set, to be able to deliver faster and to have an advantage for, uh, to the competition. If I'm on an exhibition, for example, I have to be quick. Uh, the client wants it instantly on and you can do that on set. You can edit on set and you're done. And here you come home and you don't have to sit the whole night like it, I used to do before. Which probably also means that you can offer these services for these particular shoots uh, cheaper, I guess, right? Yes. Uh, than, yes. you know, actually adding a whole editing day. Yeah. It's more attractive for the client uh, and I can show him, the iPad is perfect, you can show him before, okay, that's what they uh, look like normally and, uh, and he can sign even I have my model release on it and I have my contract on it and uh, I just change and uh, edit and uh, everything is fine and you, you have to plan your shoot more precisely and i, I noticed i mean when you when you are actually showing something on an ipad to somebody it always yeah, is a bit it's, more it's, impressive it's yeah, a bit it's, it's a better it's, selling tool so it's quite cool that you can now actually also edit on it yeah. um, so let's talk about your workflow next the smallest setup, even with the camera, is just in one bag. If I have to be very fast, very efficient, very small, I don't have even a tripod with me, not for the light, not for the camera, that's enough. And everything else is in the bag. So, this is my A7 III, then I have a VideoMic Pro, and here is a, even a Love mic, uh, the digital one from Sennheiser. Headphones, a cage, so I can mount different things, even a grip. And uh, for the face, I have a small aperture light, which is enough. And that's it. All, all of that is in this little bag. That's all in this little bag. And for the edit, all I need is this bag. There's with your iPad? With my iPad. Just my iPad, my pencil, the adapter, the external hard drive, and even a power bank. So I do not depend in any situation for my power source. So let's look at the workflow. How do you actually get the footage into your iPad? Because we know Apple doesn't provide a full file system with iOS, so I guess there's some workarounds needed, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, exactly. It depends on the on the footage I have. If I record from my Mavic, for example, or from the GoPro, I use the Apple dongle uh, with this normal adapter, and you. Just plug it in and uh, you can see your files and it's selected. But um, does it work with every camera? No, not that with every camera. For example, if I use my uh, Sony a7 III, and probably that's also with other brands, uh, a theme, the folder structure is not rec uh, recognized by the iOS system, so I use an external hard drive. But I cannot plug in an external hard drive, so I have to use a wireless hard drive. Although Apple has a USB-C port now, they do not yeah. allow external hard drives, yeah, right? It's annoying. Yeah, it's a, so, but we have to make pressure on Apple that <laughs> they change it maybe. I use this, uh, for example, now the Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro. So I have three terabytes of uh, um, storage in there and I can use, for example, a card reader with this USB-C port or even better, I can use the SD card slot and uh, just pl plug in an SD card and I can store the data in it with an auto backup or I can use it directly with the software. So basically this is a hard drive with a Wi-Fi connection that yes. you can access through your iPad with, I guess, the Western Digital app for My Passport, right? Yes, also with the Western Digital app, you do not depend on a computer basically because you can use uh, the iPad or even the iPhone uh, to see your files. And uh, you can back up in here or you can uh, use it directly in the editing program and uh, just take what you need. So what app do you actually use for editing? Because you don't have Premiere, you don't have Final Cut 10. Yeah, yeah. I work normally with Premiere, 
but uh, it doesn't work yet on the iPad, so I have to use a program called LumaFusion. LumaFusion is an editing program which basically can do everything you need, including uh, sound and three layers of uh, video footage, even 4K footage, uh, so you don't have any lag, it's fantastic. And uh, you can bring in just the data you want from a USD card. For example, we inserted your SD, SD card, card yeah. which is from Fuji. So it sees the full folder structure, right? It sees the full folder structure. That, uh, that's why it's not. It does, does not depend on any iOS system. So you can. Yeah. Go, uh, unlike Apple's adapter. Yeah. You just see the full structure yeah, with the Western Digital. You cannot use that, you know. So I see. Okay, you have a Fuji file. You have a MOV file here. Mm -hmm. And um, I just click on it, and you instantly see a preview. And you could uh, you could trim the the cuts like the the clips before you before, actually yeah. insert them. So yeah. what happens now? This is still on the SD card. What happens when you have it trimmed and you put it down? Is it automatically copying it into the it's iPad? A, exactly, it's automatically copying it in the iPad in the software. And you can export it later uh, with all the parts or with even the, the, the small edits. So you can. Oh, yeah, we see here downloading media. It's okay, downloading that's cool. Media. So it's not referencing just to the SD no, card? No, 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 no. Uh, so you don't lose any data on your uh, SD card. You can auto backup all your data. For example, if you're a couple of guys working on a set uh, and you just put in the SD cards, you switch a button, you don't need a computer, and you make okay. a backup and it creates a folder. Mm -hmm. And there, in there, all the subfolders. So you don't lose anything. But you don't have to. So you can you select just portions of clips yeah, like yeah, you do with yeah, a normal ingest. Yeah. It's okay. essential that you do exactly planning from your, yeah. from your shoot because then you're really efficient. And uh, as you see, I just imported your file. Mm -hmm. I don't it's know. It's quite a big file, so I'm surprised how, how yeah. fast it was. It's yeah. a MOV file. Huh? I, uh, I can even uh, look at the size, but uh, you see there's no lag. We can, we can do whatever we want. And th I think this is also an H.265 file. Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem with the new iPad. Uh, the older iPad had problems with the uh, H.265. But even on the iMac, it's a problem to yeah. edit H.265. Yeah. So my, this place back here? Yeah, my ma maxed out iMac 2017 with everything you can possibly uh, put in there uh, is laggy with the uh, 265. Wow. And this one is not. And you can Amazing. put three layers and even 50p 4K yeah. and it handles like... Yeah, that's a 4K H.265 file with, I think, 200 megabits or something like that yeah. from the Fuji X-T3. So yeah. it's, it's a very, very big file. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that's a, uh, that's a big deal. If you're, uh, if you're on the set and you're planning well and say, okay, I take the Fuji, for example, uh, because I have Fuji cameras or the Sony, just don't take a camera like the FS5 because the MXF file crashes uh, right now, oh. the app but it's uh, a software. It's a matter of time. So right now, yeah. I guess the mirrorless cameras with the MOV and MP4 yeah. containers yeah. work, but the MXF yeah. don't work yet with LumaFusion. Yeah. And you can mix it all. And the good part is, for example, I have, a, I have some footage which, which I recorded in 4K, and at the same time I recorded something in uh, slow motion, 100p, and the program recognizes uh, that is, uh, there is a potential uh, that you can sl make a slow mo with, without uh, skipping frames, yeah. and it's super smooth, and it's like you do it on a, on a big computer. Can you just show us, you know, one of your projects that you edited there, so we have a bit of an idea of the software? Yeah, for example, uh, in the beginning, you see an Im animation which is coming in. This is the logo. Mm -hmm. uh, this would not work because After Effects does not work. The files yeah. they have problems, but. I made this also in After Effects, but I put it on a green screen and I keyed it out so you see that that background is normally oh, okay. in green. And if I, if I open that, you see it's green, but I have a key feature. I can uh, have different keys. Um, so you basically made this file I made it on the computer, yeah. but with a green background exactly. and not with an alpha channel, like a, because it doesn't recognize alpha channels from, from, from After Effects? or not from, not from After Effects, but you can make every transparent layer. You can have even, like you, like you see, this bar for the lower thirds is also transparent. But okay. this is made directly in. But you can. You that's can directly in LumaFusion. That's in LumaFusion, but you can basically um, use a Photoshop file, okay. or a BNG, or this animation, and uh, it's smooth. There's there's no problem at so all. So it just takes. You can select the layers that you want to use from a Photoshop file as yeah, well. Yeah, whatever. Great. And uh, hopefully it all comes up very fast now with the uh, Photoshop for the iPad because this is a killer program. Uh, for example, you see here the the, the small logo uh, on top. 
that's a PNG file of which I made uh, in, in mm -hmm. uh, Illustrator. Wow. Yeah. So it takes everything uh, and you that's you see cool. there's nothing you have to, and you can So how many layers of video can you have in LumaFusion? For the moment they offer three video layers and three audio layers. Okay. But sometimes you have not enough for example if you go to the end of the film you, you have mm -hmm. different layers yeah. but you can stack them, you know? In this case I made ah, cool. an outro and I I duplicated the elements, just not the logo. The logo is different. So this is like a, a um, like a consolidated clip, or like a, what is it called in Premiere, the um, the package. The package, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You cannot save everything, but it would be nice to have an intro and outro which you can save for uh, yeah. forever, and you just take what you need. But in this case, I can just duplicate the the timeline. It's it's a, mm -hmm. uh, takes one second and you can work with this program and delete the scenes you don't need and you use okay. the beginning and, and the ending. And then I just uh, have to add the, the logo and there's a workaround. But this, is, for example, is an After Effects anim uh, animation, uh, which is of course not transparent possible, but you can edit mm -hmm. uh, like this. Like you make your intros, um, you can use the ready-made yeah. intro with the sound uh, and put in there and, and you can split the sound. There is a very important feature for interviews, for example, this uh, audio ducking. If you, if you have a, a guy like here speaking in front of the camera, but you don't want to, to manage the, the sound always when he, when he says something, uh, you have to define this clip as a master file and the, the, the music which you have below Oh. is uh, the, um, automatic. So the music will lower when he's talking? Automatically. That's amazing. Even if you change the clip or length, uh, it okay. doesn't need any rendering time at all. Wow. It's in real time. So okay. no matter what we do, it will always fit. Okay, so yeah. you don't have to actually lift and, no. and uh, you no. do keyframes no and stuff. You see, there's no curves. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it automatically lowers yeah. the you, audio. You can do that, but it's, uh, it's, unnecessary. it's not necessary. You see, there's no nothing at all. Okay. Yeah? Amazing. And, and there in the configuration, uh, you can say uh, ducking, you, you select auto. Mm -hmm. Funny. Or it depends which, which clip. Maybe is. this feature exists in, in, in Premiere as well, but I've never used it. So. Auto ducking exists in the yes. newer version. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've never used it yeah. too. <laughs> Good to know though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's amazing. I mean, the, the whole editing feels more, a lot more haptic because you are literally touching your yeah. image, yeah. which is something um, yeah. you, know, you can't do of course on your normal computer and also I mean I've used my older iPad with a you know Logitech keyboard years ago already for writing mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff yeah. where you didn't have these productivity apps yet and when I went back to my MacBook Pro it felt like I, I want to touch the screen yeah. but I can't exactly. and it's so weird and you feel like this is the future mm -hmm. but it's not exactly. there yet but yeah, I think yeah. this is one of the good examples where you can see what it can be and that you can actually use it productively already uh, as it is now. So when you're done with an edit like that, how can you export it? How can you give it to your client at, at the end, right? Because that's the whole point is, yeah. is having it done immediately. So, I mean, are you uploading straight from the app to YouTube or Vimeo? Or are you giving them a file? Or do you have to go through a computer for that? No, no, you don't need a computer. Definitely, you, do, you don't need anything. Maybe the external drive, but it's not really necessary. If you're finished with a, with a, a film, you just click here and export and you have all uh, ways uh, you can export the movie, the audio, uh, uh, the whole project, the snapshot, uh, whatever. And if you click on a movie, you have the presets already done for like uh, Vimeo, YouTube, Facebook. Now it's a 4K uh, file, uh, but I can, I, I can select, okay, mm -hmm. I would like to have it in full HD. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it shows you already the, the file size mm -hmm. and which codec is used. Uh, you can change that also the frame Amazing. rate. Uh, and it's so fast. And if you work and maybe you're used to shortcuts, you also have them here. You just click on command. Oh, wow. And you see the shortcuts and you have even a second page and I think you can change them all right also. So you can really work fast, placing fast. And uh, if, you, if you want to insert your graphics, you just 
can place them uh, in a folder in the iPad because now it works. So mm -hmm. I have a folder which is also in the iCloud where I, I, uh, I have my logos and my, uh, my different... Oh, uh, so you just, just uh, take it from I iCloud? I just take it, you mm -hmm. know, and it doesn't uh, use a lot of space. And so I, I'm always, I, even if I don't have this one, I can work. Mm -hmm. And if you just push this button, you can switch to a different uh, project. It looks very similar to Final Cut Pro 10 in some yeah. ways. Yeah. Well, I have no experience with the Final Cut Pro 10, but uh, for example, ah, yeah, this one I could show you. Uh, we made a fast um, record with the with the iPhone, and this one I took from the SD card uh, which I recorded uh, from the A7 III. So I mix it up and this edit. So this is a mixture between iPhone yeah. footage and exactly. A7 III. It doesn't footage. matter at all. Yeah. And uh, I just searched the music track and uh, I made this text uh, in LumaFusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, this edit maybe took me 15 minutes. Amazing. Cool. I think, I mean, I think we'll wrap it up here. It's a, it's a great first look at, at LumaFusion and how to professionally edit on the iPad. And I think you're proving that it actually works. So Absolutely. maybe we can work on a tutorial in the future on LumaFusion because I think that's something that a lot of uh, members of our audience might be interested in. Uh, I think it's under the radar of a lot of professional people still. Yeah. But if you look at the possibilities here, it's it's, it's something yeah. that you know probably everybody should be aware of for some specific edits. I mean, if I think about our show videos at from NAB, IBC, and all yeah. the other trade shows we attend. Um, you have to be fast. We have to be very fast yeah. and we, we always uh, you know, try to be one of the first ones to publish news about a new yeah. product. And, and this could be the perfect way of doing that because right now we run with an SD card. We, you know, we send one of our guys or we run ourselves yeah. to the press yeah. room, which is usually, yeah. you know, it's kilometers away from yeah. where you are, or where you just shot that. Night. Yeah, no, we, we usually, we try to work from the press rooms yeah. as much as possible and, and, and then upload from there. But it takes ages. And as you said, it takes ages just to get started with the edit. Yeah. So this is, if, if you can remove that barrier, I think this is a very viable way of working um, with the iPad. Amazing. And, and you sit in a cafe and uh, you have a cappuccino and you make the edit yeah. and you can give the client already on a USB stick, for example, so go, hey, here's your film. I'm done. I go home. Awesome. Thank you, Pedro. Let's work on a tutorial for LumaFusion and uh, thanks everybody for watching. I hope that got you excited to give the iPad Pro a try for professional editing. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Cinema 5D for more videos like this one. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks. And if you have special tips or experience with LumaFusion, maybe you can post a comment for us. Yeah. See you soon.